Since this is a presidential election year, it seemed like the right time to stop by Buffalo's Theodore Roosevelt National Historic Site and check out the place where our 26th president took the oath for the highest office in the land. Teddy Roosevelt? <laughs> That's President Roosevelt to you, young fellow. <laughs> pardon me, Mr. President. Well, I pardoned hundreds when I was president, many my Rough Riders and fellow cowboys. One more pardon won't hurt. <laughs> well, thank you, then. <laughs> Why don't I show you around the place? Sure. You know I've been here before. So you were inaugurated in this very room. What was that like? It was terribly sad and serious. As you know, President McKinley was shot here in Buffalo, New York, while greeting visitors to the Pan American Expo on September 6th, 1901. And as he died on September 14th, 1901, I was summoned here to take the oath of office in the library of my friend, Mr. Ansley Wilcox. So Mr. President, what were some of the key issues that you had to address upon assuming the office? The issue above all others was the conservation of our natural resources, eventually the establishment of parks and forests. Yes, uh, is there any chance of getting you to run today? <laughs> I tried that in 1912, after Taft had made a mess of everything. I shan't try that again. Well, speaking of non-consecutive presidential terms, maybe we can pay a visit to some of your predecessors here in Buffalo. I'd love to, bully. <laughs> Fitting memorial to our martyred president, William McKinley. If there was one last thing you could say to him before he was assassinated, what might that be? Mr. President, at all costs, avoid shaking hands with an anarchist. <laughs> and in all seriousness, it would be well done, our good and faithful servant. From the fields of Antietam to the White House, no man has served the Union and our nation as well as President William McKinley. Well put. Grover Cleveland. Now there's a trailblazer for you. He was elected president two different times. A statistic I shall always envy. He rose all the way from City Hall in Buffalo to the White House twice, serving as our 22nd and our 24th president. So here we are at Forest Lawn, the grave of Millard Fillmore. You don't really hear too much about him. Well, he was a Whig, a predecessor of the Republican Party. Like me, a young member of the New York General Assembly, and, and like me, he came to the presidency through the graveyard, uh, ascending to the presidency mm -hmm. from the vice presidency upon the death of President Zachary Taylor. Legendary Founding Father. Oh, what a wonderful place. I think you're gonna like it here. You're gonna fit right in. <laughs> Bully. You look so familiar. I am Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt, my favorite <laughs> president. <laughs> Mr. Driscoll, I understand that you host a monthly trivia night here at Founding Fathers. Yes, we do. First Tuesday of every month. Delightful. Would you like a sample question? Sure, sure. Yeah. I'll make Don't it an stop. easy one. Who's buried in Grant's tomb? Ooh, 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 I know that. Of course, it's Ulysses S. Grant. Wrong, Mr. Starr. Grant's tomb is a mausoleum. President and Mrs. Grant are not buried there. They are entombed there. Mr. Roosevelt, <laughs> you get an A for the course. You better have another beer. Figures, what else should I do? <laughs> I'm Nelson Starr. See you next time on Buffalo For Real TV. And I'm Theodore Roosevelt, and I approve this message. Ha, 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 ha.